Hello everybody and welcome to the Grim Dark of 40k. We're going to paint a Mephistian figure here. Now, this is not a... I believe this is a GW figure. I don't know who makes it. Once I can find that out, I'll throw it in the description for you. Some kind of a link to that. You can see it's relatively... I mean, most of the details pretty similar. Obviously, this is different here. you got your skull over here. We'll try and come up with some kind of a color scheme here for this and have some fun with that. Now I've got some references here. Let's you see this one right here in the corner. Maybe we'll throw that on the robe there, that there's space for it. Now I've got a nice little view of his head here and when you look at this, I mean, they're pretty darn similar. Look at the face on that to that head over there on the left hand side. We'll, we'll try that. Now I've got this reference over here and as uh, you can see there is definitely a, a difference especially in this area right over here so we'll we'll do what we can to sort of make the two line up obviously you've got these shoulders are, are different right here and I think you know, yeah some of the like we got plenty of gold here uh, I don't know if we'll fill these up here with some kind of maybe blood or something like that maybe maybe not I do have to determine if, are these if these are just purity seals right here maybe we'll do some fun purity seal type stuff on there see what can happen with that but this was an all resin figure which we're going to paint just with a combination of things I've seen me do this before where we take the contrast paints here actually I can make the Mephistian picture smaller for you there we go. The usual wildwood, Leviathan blue. Let's see if we've got a got obviously snake bite leather. Over here we've got the flesh tear red. That's that gore grunter fur. There's your Leviathan blue over there. But we're gonna mix those. Ah, here he is, he's hiding right over there. We're gonna mix that with some some of the regular GW colors. I don't have many. I have a few. So we'll play with these guys here. Just uh, just a couple of them. Keep it simple. And what we'll do is we'll mix these with these. I've done this before. I've got a bunch of Facebook Lives where we do this. And I thought maybe I'll just do a tutorial on this because it has a bunch of different things. Obviously freehand potentially here some different colors. We've got the the sword here too which I'll try and have it with that glowing effect. That's gonna be a Kelian green. Let me just hunt that down for you real quick over here. So that's gonna be part of our sword right here. So we'll probably be mixing this with lighter colors and we'll try and do some object source lighting along here. It's gonna it's gonna take in many Oh, many skills, uh, many, many areas of techniques here. I try and slam as many of those as I can onto a miniature anyway. That's why I thought this could be interesting for it because it runs the full gamut of pretty much everything. And what we'll do is we get the paint out on the palette here and we'll get into painting our Mephistian next. Let's kick this off with those initial glazes and shaded base coat. And we'll start this off in the usual way. We're going to take Wildwood. We're going to take Slim of and Blue. We'll mix these together. I am actually going to take a spot of water here and thin it down a bit. And we'll just start to drop in some, some dark glazes here real quick. And every so often, like here where there's the, the dirt texture or whatever, that's where I throw in a little bit of the Sneak Bite leather. But right here, I'm not super concerned here about you know, just things covering something else because this was glued to the base, which means I'm just going to have to shove that this brush down in here. There's pretty much nothing else for it. So I, this is basically what can happen when you're doing commission things. You not only don't get to decide what it is you're painting, you don't necessarily get to decide how you're painting it. <laughs> And you can see I'm also, since the cloak is supposed to be black as well, or at least a very dark color. I don't necessarily call it black. I'm just going to let this work its way up there too. 
But I just have to make sure that at least somehow I get the brush into all these areas. And this is why we've got, I'm not, look at that. See that black stuff on there? Look at that. That's actually basically, essentially glue and sand, for lack of a, a better term. That's some of the oxide paste. Or no, it's earth paste. It's from Vallejo. It's what I use for basting all the time. I did not base this, obviously. So here, we're going to continue then. I got some of the Leviathan blue mixed with our mixed with the wildwood and we'll just we'll continue here and I'm going to also hit the underside of this. So yeah, I did not assemble this. I didn't do any of that. Just it basically arrived this way. Actually, I had to put a different sword on here because when it was sent to me, the sword was already broken off and I didn't know where it was so I just grabbed another one it's actually one of the Reaper sword bits it's one of the plastic swords so I just pin that on there in its place and much happier with that see this is also another thing here we want to have the same Achillean green glow over here and that could just be fun to have some object source lighting it's, it's even more in, interesting on, on something like this where you just have so many surfaces in such a small area it kind of helps the mind or the eye manage those because otherwise the eye just kind of goes oh my gosh this is gonna I can't absorb all this it's too much too much all right so I think we've got that pretty well in hand now these two, I can't, I haven't seen anything actually that has those two on those, so I have to just decide, are they going to be more like just some brass or gold sensors or something like that? We'll see. But for now, I'm going to now start to switch here. So I've got snake bite leather, that works its way in here. Actually, letting it get thinned down to, not normally, yeah, okay, you consider the the contrast medium or whatever I don't really it's not that big of a deal again the snake bite leather that kinda tilts it a little bit more towards the gold side of things and here we go boy this uh... that's moving around there that's super fragile too well, a lot of this is very fragile so I'm not gonna I'm going to be a little bit more delicate here with the makeup sponges. So I'm cutting these up. So we took one of these, chopped it up into smaller pieces. And what we're going to do is we're just going to remove some of the excess here. That lets some of the original primer come through. And it's it's the usual Badger Steiner res, obviously. Gonna go back to my light and blue here. Finish off the basing part of this. The idea is, even though the primer has some shading on it, as you can see, we want to we want to close that out as as quickly as we can and just move on. From there, I want to get that that primer out of the way. Now there are, it looks like some skulls on the base here. But you see, that's now I, I just have a better idea of where I'm at, color-wise, value-wise, that whole thing. Now, what I'm looking at here, I see. I want to go to actually be easier. Yeah, what we'll do. There's just so much uh, gold here. What we're going to do is uh, dive into our Sneak bite leather, touch that gore grunta to keep it from getting too much towards the yellow side. So that's going to tint it a little bit more towards the red. And in we go. I will also be shifting my lights around at a, at a certain point here because when the when the primer is lighter like this the light tends to bounce around once there's paint on everything I can switch my lights around so now this is a little bit more of the red into it and I'm just gonna let it go right over that face the idea is not to use the contrast paint the way 
the, the GW folks tell you. So if you're new to this and you're thinking, well, that's not how you're supposed to use them, it's like, well, I pretty much don't use anything the way you are supposed to. This is not about using this as whatever some kind of... Uh, yes, it's sort of appreciating, but it's more controlled to what I want it to be. And that's where we're going to take some sponges here. Because this ain't something that GW talks about. I'm fairly certain they don't get into wiping away some of the contrast paint. But you notice I only do so much because this way the paint is wet enough so that when I go back in with these sponges I can actually remove some of it. So you can see that really enhances some of the shading. Now if I have some, ah, I got a few small ones left here. Look at that. So I can do even more. And already, just within, see that's actual shading slash tinting as opposed to the usual contrast stuff which just okay if it's an ultramarine just slap a bunch of blue on it and pray for the best. No, this is we're doing something a little bit more than just that. Something a little bit more here. And where I need the red, we're just we'll go back in where I need it, but there's an awful lot of gold here. In fact there's almost more gold than there is red. We also want to keep in mind that we've got object source lighting coming from two different places. Not just one, but two. Why would I sit here and do all these really elaborate base coats and everything else? Not just base coats, but start shading and all this other stuff before I see where that object source lighting is going to go. And that, that will be the next thing we do is we get into the object source lighting and we put that in as soon as possible. I mean, like right away, no sense in waiting, because if you do, well, you might end up having to just paint over an area anyway. So now you've just, you've painted the same area twice, and it's only going to look like you painted it once, so no point in doing that. Now obviously we're going to maybe put some other colors in here for some of these wires, probably, I guess, if that's what they are. But for now, I'm just going to give them this one color here. Again, it's between the snake bite leather, some of that gore, grunta, fur color. Nothing fancy. And this is what I would normally do if you're familiar, let's say, with the Patreon page. You've seen me do this with Reaper paints, with Green Stuff World paints, with the Creature Caster paints and a combinations of so look at here see we're just gonna take some of that away that's a little bit more in-depth shading than just see the contrast paints can provide because well you can see what's when we put this on that's what just the contrast paint does but now by removing some look at how much it took away see over here we just get that much more out of our contrast paint shading it's something that I can build on that much easier that much easier to build on it and let's just hit this and this I believe that is dry enough and we'll do a little bit of a let's throw that Achillean green in there just to remind me just to remind me don't really care again it's now we have to decide, are we going to do the crackle thing? I'm not going to do the crackle thing. I'm actually just going to do more of a metal effect here on the sword. Sometimes I even use my finger. Now watch what happens down here. This side. Take some of that away. But to look at this, it's a kind of light on one side, dark on the other. We reverse it again over here too. So that's just straight away. Now, see, we got some wildwood over here. We will thin that down a touch. And I'm just letting, I'm going to get a little bit of this Achillean green in there. And it's going to be, boom, right 
over the top there. This will obviously be lighter than this if it's supposed to be purity seals. I just want to get some initial, like I said, some initial shading in there. Look at the bottom of this. Boom. Like you do. And take some of it away. So you see how much lighter that got after we took some away. Because there's your underside. And you see, like I said, how much lighter it gets, but we still left behind is all that fun, all that fun shading. Yeah, so check it out. Here we go. Do it, do it again here. I'm going to grab some of the more yellowish mix there that we were using on the armor in places. So yes, we'll put red on this guy, but obviously first thing to do is get that glow established. But in the meantime, here, we'll just wipe some of this away. And it's fun to do wet into wet also. Let's see if we can. I'll just hit his robe here. We'll keep going. This again, the, the usual number eight round craft brushes. So I put a little bit of that, I keep wanting to call it Space Wolves Gray, but a little bit of that Fenrisian blue into my Leviathan blue mix and hit this. Oh, let's do that here. And around here. And let's see what we can do. It's almost going to be a little bit like oil paints in a way. So I'll just let some of that lighter go. We'll just mix in with that. And it's going to give me some nice, you know, just subtle bits of shading in there. Now, I'm not going to do too much with the lights as they are, because for you, it looks like it's blinding light. For me, it's practically pure dark. I mean, I'm just, it's like I'm painting this thing by a flashlight in comparison. Now, I am going to get some of this on the sword blade here just a bit. Yeah, yeah, let's get some dark up here too. Like we need. Let's get some... I'm going to get some lighter tones on the base. It looks like you can see what we're doing there. Sometimes the figure just gets in the way. So if I'm going to do any really elaborate painting of a base, I try to make sure the figure's not sitting on it. Ah, there's a skull back over here too. Just did not know that. I didn't really... I try not to necessarily study the sculpts too much in advance because to me, in some ways, you learn a little bit more. You know what? I'm going to go here. Okay, let's do this. We're going to take some of that Flashed here red, make it a little darker here. Nah, he's on screen for you, and we're just gonna go right in there. Now let's get this arm too. But that's gonna get, like I said, it's gonna get so much of the optic source lighting in it. Why would I just go crazy with that right now? So we're gonna get some of our red into here. I'm going to get some red onto those sensors, which because of what's underneath there, it almost kind of, again, turns you know, like a, like a copper-type color. Interesting. Now, well, there's not a whole lot of the just the regular power armor showing. It's got a lot of purity seals and other stuff over the top of it. And... As I always say, I just I don't prime things black and layer up. We, we started out that way many years ago and then realized, well, that's why it's taken a week to paint one figure that now takes us 40 minutes to paint. And it's a thousand times better. 
So that's something to ponder when, when you're thinking about this this whole shaded base coat type thing. Now let's get some red back here too. This is the time to just stick your brush into places and, and see what happens. Now just be messy now. Might as well just be messy now because this is that messy stage. And the shaded base coat thing, it's not a pretty delicate little technique. I think as you can tell, that is not, it's not for the faint of heart, I guess. All right, I'm going to get some red on the fingers here. And now what we're going to do is, even now, just for a few minutes here, I'm going to mix up a few of these lighter. Yeah, I'm going to get me a different brush here. That was really, I mean, that's one of my destroyed brushes right there. That's because you saw I was jamming the brush into place as well. Yeah, it's, it's always best to do something like that with a brush you just don't care about. So here we go. We got a little bit of the contrast paint mixed with some of the Baylor Brown. And you can see what we're starting to do here. It's not a dry brush at all, but it is sort of a feathered brush stroke with, and you can see the, this is the other advantage of those craft brushes. Not only do they just take a pounding and kind of survive, but see, I can almost turn it into a, and that, that shape is a, a filbert brush shape there. So here, let's do... None of this is meant to be any sort of a finished layer. This is just, we're still base coating. People say, what's with the shaded base coat deal? Well, I had to call it something. You, every take, you have to call it something. You can't just just do it. You have to call it something. You have to give it a name and... I don't know. Six years ago, that was the best name that I could think of at the time. But you just, you have to be willing to kind of set aside the instant gratification because you're not going to have that. We're not just painting his face and leaving the rest of it black primer. That's not going to happen. Because, well, you can sit there and paint one tiny part of it couple things are going to happen. First of all, it's going to take you a heck of a long time. And most of us don't have any time, much less a heck of a long time. Other things going to happen. You know, now that I have this, some of this gold in place around his head, I got a better idea of what should I maybe do with the skin, which we're going to make a few, few little skin colors right here so that's kind of a dark skin tone we'll throw that in there just let it mix we are going to indicate a bit of golds over here on the sword blade now I'm a little bit more used to doing this particular technique with say the creature caster paints the slow fuse monument that paint of a bazillion names Rather than the GW stuff, because we don't we don't have much in the way of GW paint. We haven't had much in the way of GW paint for years. There's a variety of reasons for that. Uh, probably the catalyst was when they basically closed all the GW stores around us. We used to have a huge community here, and that all was kind of, well, we'll just say there was a... <laughs> All the stores closed and people either went elsewhere to separate places or then those places were closed. So we just didn't really have an easy way of getting GW paint as in walking into a store and getting it. So there was other paints. We used those. We said, well, these are actually really nice. We started using those instead. The only reason I even started using the GW paints again is I find something a little bit more neutral for these purity seals here. This is because people were asking. I was perfectly content to just pretty much never use GW paints again, but people say, look, that's all I can get. 
can you at least show me something that I can do with with your techniques with GW Paint and that's basically I had to kind of relearn what to do with them so you see here the stuff that was so dark there now it's not quite so dark And look, we've got basically a sort of a nice parchment lightning color out here already. And we can even do, look at this, a little bit of wet into wet. But look at all the variety there. Instead of just, oh gosh, whatever the GW color is that they would have you use to make the parchment thing. And then probably take Devlin Mud over the top of it or whatever. This just lets me have more interesting stuff going on here. Way more depth. And like I can still, and I'm still not even at white. This is not white. This is just whatever the the, the screaming skull is. You could definitely go lighter than this. See, it's got a nice scumbling action going on here. It's it's blending together. Look at that. Check that out, baby. And then I can actually do. Let's say I want to do that sort of the stains on there, where it looks like it's kind of burned around the edges or whatever. So what we're going to do, uh, you know, let, let's hit the one underneath. Right, right before we take off here onto the next segment, I had to wait for some of that red to dry at least a little bit. It's the other advantage of the big old brush. Big old brush lets me get in here. And you take advantage of all the nifty things that were already there just from the contrast paints. And yeah, I can even I can even put a link in the description to the Hobby Lobby site. But let's say you don't have a Hobby Lobby around you or whatever, you're in Europe. Any kind of synthetic watercolor brush, you look around, you'll you'll be able to find some. Because I've had to find alternatives sometimes myself. So it can happen. It can be done. It can definitely be done. All right. So we will say that's good for just this initial. Again, we're just trying to lay out the colors. We know where our glow is going to come from now. We sort of started to map things out. And now what we'll do is we'll establish that glow in the next segment. And we'll be right back with that. As I mentioned, we're going to throw in some of our little bit of object source lighting here, a little bit of a glow. Now, I think there's another spot in here. I'm looking at the reference picture, so it does show a little bit of that over by his head there. I just This is just a generic white right here. I'm going to mix it with the Achillean green. And now you see what it does? Look, it becomes sort of a semi opaque it starts to cover a bit more but it's more of a mid-tone and what's the whole deal with the mid-tone stuff it's it's halfway between light and dark let's say that your darkest color is a 10 and your lightest color is a 1 that whole range of well especially 3 through 7 that's definitely a good bet for your middle tones Another thing, and boy, every time I do object source lighting, I bring this up. If you're going to have object source lighting, have it be lighter than the thing you're lighting. Because I've seen stuff, okay, we got this gold over here, right? I've seen people take a dark blue, and quite literally the, the blue glow is darker than what's there. And it just makes no sense whatsoever. It doesn't look like it's lighting anything because it's lighter than the thing it's supposed to be illuminating. Which, as we just mentioned, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So I'm probably going to... I might actually do some of that crackling energy type stuff maybe. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Even this, I think it can still be sort of that glowing sword in any case. Now we've got to get some... Looks like you can see that. I gotta get some of that down here. 
and the other reason we do the establishing the glow as soon as we possibly can well how extensive do you want it to be now here we also have multiple light sources that we've got to deal with too so another thing to consider now you see why I didn't necessarily paint those things because well how far is this glow gonna extend beyond now what if oh what the heck maybe we'll do some more over here because why not could be fun could be a disaster who knows it's just a miniature after all no pressure I think that's the other thing I'm trying to and I've, I've seen it I just saw someone posted on their Instagram this they did some shaded base coat stuff and I'm looking at it going because I, I am painting I've showed people how to do that on some not splintered fang it's the the untamed beasts the original war one of the original war cry factions there and I'm like when the heck did I paint this sure as heck looks an awful lot like stuff that I did and they had they had taken it and made it part of their own it's, it's like in their toolbox now and they too were able to take these ideas and they made something that was close enough to make me look because even the basing the way they did it I said geez wait a minute I put a different type of foliage on my base than that so yes it's possible it is indeed possible. Now we mentioned getting a little bit of that blue over there, but you can see we're even letting that mix with the colors that are already there because it, it would that's what it would do. It would sort of do that. And you can see now how the, the glow starts to become more extensive here. Now like I said, all I'm trying to do is say, okay, what's it going to hit? What's it not going to hit? So like here shouldn't really hit that because it's kind of blocked it's gonna say his arm is in the way there are times where sometimes I'll extend it a little bit more than maybe it should be but sometimes I'm just looking for some interest like here to all of this stuff potentially just could have been sort of boring it'd be different just okay yes it'd be gold great and that's about it but now because of this object source lighting a bit we get to and we're gonna knock this down it's not gonna be this intense because we've got this object source lighting it just like I said it gives this a little bit more interesting something going on now it's still gonna be kinda of one of those unholy messes for a while that's there's actually we don't even let people see work in progress photos because they'll look at it and say well it's not supposed to be yellow where's the red and so well just wait for it the red's coming eventually we just said you know what screw this <laughs> we're not doing this game anymore we're just you see it when you see it and that's how it goes so to get that glow to be more of a glow what do we do we grab some of our sneak bite leather and it is fun that we get our snake bite leather back. So look at this. See, all of a sudden now it's a little bit darker. I'm gonna go back and do some other highlight things, but overall, that is now darker. That means that what we did as far as our our lighting effect, it's gonna show up just a bit more. I don't know if I'll make every single one of these things glowing blue. Maybe it'll just have a blue hint to it instead of necessarily just a something that's casting all kinds of glow all over the place. Because as I mentioned before, yeah, you know, you can... It's like with, what is that, weathering, chipping, those kind of things. Sometimes that can... Oh, it can just get out of control really fast. It can just kind of uh, get away from you, however you want to call it. So it's, look, we haven't gone anywhere near our lightest light with this. Just take more of the white, put it in with the Achillean green. Makes a nifty sky blue, tell you that. 
the the Keelian green you see that an awful lot when I'm doing my was that the sky earth non-metallic metal effect oh, oh yeah you see that a bunch and I'll, I'll put as many links as I can in the description to some of those sessions there but the YouTube live sessions there well all I have to do is well just technically all I have to do is subscribe but you might want to also hit that all notifications bell uh, it's something I forget to do all the time and then I wonder well why the heck don't I get the notifications who knows why YouTube now made it basically a two-step process maybe it's the difference between phones and tablets slash laptops slash tower units like yes some of us still use I don't know mobile devices uh, whatever I think we can start to make even that a little bit lighter but it's not a unidirectional unidirectional process sometimes we make things lighter sometimes we make things darker we just like here with this I am going to make this the idea is make it lighter 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 and I'm just gonna go over the top of that with those darker striations there in the in the plasma pistol well that's probably is that a combi what is that pl it looks that's not a combi plasma flema, is it not? Flema? Yeah, flame er. I, I'm just going back to the old days when I had my demon hunter army and oh gosh, my inquisitor retinues. Yeah. And there was always a gun servitor with a plasma plasma cannon. But because I had a I don't know if it was a mystic or a mage or both. There was or sage. That's it. It was mystic and sage. I was able to re-roll the dice. So I think if he did the the one for a gets hot or something like that, I think I was able to re-roll that or whatever. That might only have been once a game or something, but that was certainly handy. But look at this. Look at how this changes. It's all, look at that, just, it changes so fast. Then all we did was we add a little bit of basically an off-white to a Keelian green. And then started to pick out a few spots, right? Not, not hard at all. And let's say if I want this a little bit, if it gets too bright in an area, well, I, I can just take some Achillean green. We knock it down and we're good to go. All good to go. A bit more here. Nice. I'm going to focus more on the underside of this and then leave this. I don't necessarily want to have just, like I said, I want to have glow everywhere. In some places, we don't want it to look like a, a glowing blue marine or something like that, or Aquaman or whatever. We want to have him have some of his red. But why why bother painting all that red only to cover it up with the object source lighting? So let's let's do that first. And that's why that's why we got this going right now. Just saves so much time not having to paint something twice. Well, and the other thing too is that's one of the reasons why people don't do the object source lighting, because their approach is gonna be Oh, you know, I painted all this other stuff first. Now I'm going to superimpose the lighting effect over the top of it. You do that, like, that's what we used to do. I mean, we thought, okay, you paint the whole miniature first for the most part, and then afterwards, that's when you add your object source lighting. And I realized, well, okay, then why did I paint all this stuff again? Because I pretty much just repainted the whole darn thing. This is another reason why I didn't want to get too fancy with what was in those sensors there, because I'd rather have the sword actually reflect onto that. And again, remember, right now you see more of the glow effect you'll see 
a little bit less of it as we start to add in our other shading the reds the the golds everything else I'm just going to maybe, maybe a, a hint of that over there but let's get to see especially thinking here on the plasma I'll just call it a plasma guy. It sure is not a plasma cannon. There we go. And one of the reasons it's lighter, it's not because it's it's so much brighter than the power sword. It's just it's closer. I mean, it is right next to his leg, whereas this is being held out further away. So it makes sense that this would maybe cast a little bit less light. Think of a, what the surface is that you're casting the light onto. If it's metal, more reflective, whatever is a more reflective surface, well, it's just going to it's gonna show up more there than, let's say, if you're trying to reflect it on cloth. So just still something to ponder, that's all. Now, of course... It seems like the vast majority of these surfaces pretty much are metal. For for better or for worse, that's what most of them are. Alright, let's get our let's get to our rock here. Get a little bit of lighter coat on that. And I don't want to get too too wrapped up in just the the glow here. But what we'll do from here as we get this pretty much settled. Then we'll move on to things like uh, the robe and, and trying to get some of the reds in there too because we haven't really played much with those. Haven't had a chance to do much with those. And there, see we got the... Trying to do a little bit of a dark over that. I just wanted to dust some of that in there. We're going to go back and obviously with smaller brushes and we'll we'll work these things a little bit finer I think that's the other everything is a zero-sum game now you're either doing all with an airbrush or all with a super tiny brush or all with this or all with that and it's like, well uh, and why are we why is it that we have to do it all in just this one thing is there some kind of law written that you can only use an airbrush or you just take the airbrush like me and just put your Steiner res on there. Now, I will be trying to do some more things. Or just doing more with the airbrush, doing more stages of the figure with it. But my calculus always is, well, okay, what's the cleanup time, the setup time? You don't always, yeah, with the airbrush there's other factors involved whereas this when I'm done painting little brush in water put the lid on my Chinese food container which is what my wet palette is and then I walk away and that's it uh, not so much with an airbrush there's a little bit more you're gonna have to do before you walk away than that you also need the the compressor you need the oh, the air filter a mask all these other things Whereas this requires a piece of parchment paper, a sponge, an empty Chinese food container, and yes, the Mongolian beef was delicious. That's all it takes for me. Because, well, obviously I have the airbrush, and I do airbrush things. But I use it mostly just as a glorified tool for priming. It just That's what it... It's easier for me, as you can see, just go in here with a regular brush. Instead of trying to mask things off and, as I said, spend a whole bunch of extra time not necessarily providing much value. Speaking of value, just while I'm at it, I'm going to hit the skin tone here. Now that's just getting a little bit too on the pinkish side, so I'm going to hit it with some of my more yellowish type color and then we're going to do some glazes over the top of that but I just want to mark that and now I'm also going to spread the love here with some of the 
skin tone and some folks will say well wait a minute that's that's gold gold doesn't get skin tone well it really doesn't but here let's when people see this overall they're not going to notice that there's this reddish color there they won't see it now here I'm just gonna throw some of the mid-tone golds here because we can still go much lighter with these golds this uh, is still maybe maybe a four on the value scale something around that range something like that and we'll just like I said we're going to try and find as many different colors as we can because well any metals reflected by gold especially reflective which means we've got to find other colors nearby and reflect those we didn't used to do that we used to very intensely shade our metallic colors so they they had nice shading on them but as far as okay that that metal glint uh, not so convincing not really very convincing at all because well we didn't think okay he's wearing a red tunic or cloak or whatever how is all that shiny metal miraculously avoiding all that red cloak and shirt and whatever <laughs> it, it's like right there but yet it has absolutely no effect on the metal does that make any sense so here we we'll see we're going to take some of that basically it's it's a skin color I'll put some of that onto the parchment here a couple of places because you know why not here's a bit more now we'll, we'll let's get a little bit of our yellow in here and all the while I'm just thinking okay let's let's leave some for our red let's leave a little bit of room in this value scale here because if we go too light too fast too, okay like if we get to that final highlight stage and there's nowhere to go you can't make it any lighter because you already used up your lightest highlights that's that age-old example that I always use of the person that was in that was one of the first classes that we taught at Adepticon it was our non-metallic metals class and you could just tell somebody was not having an easy time of things and they said no matter how light I go I'm putting white on here but I still have no value no shading and I just I asked for the miniature and just with two brush strokes on the underside of the sword basically right here I put a darker value there and it, it, it instantaneously he went ah okay so you never forget that lesson he said ah, I see so when when you're adding tons of lighter color and yet you don't see any kind of difference in what you're adding and what's there you gotta go the opposite way but let's say you're going as dark as you think you can well maybe you need to switch the other way maybe you need to actually get lighter just something to think about something to ponder and you see we're just varying varying our colors a little bit here and there look at this we're gonna get even more of the skin tone color in there it's one of those that very first chapter of the book of wobble if the color goes somewhere must go everywhere and the folks on the patreon page they've certainly heard me say that many times that's why I made stickers of it and over well the course of I've lost track of how many videos it's hundreds now between the the new ones I've done and the original painting pyramid ones so that's uh, the patreon page you do the army painting pledge level well <laughs> you'll be seeing those hundreds of videos because you'll get all those links it's definitely pushing 350 hours now of 
total content with all the army painting series and you get to see things well tutorials like this you'll see these long before other folks do and sometimes well like in the case of the dark sword videos those just never go public those are just part of the dark sword painting pledge level and well actually army painter will get you that too army painter pretty much unlocks a whole bunch of those all the different types of videos basing dark sword terrain and then yes it even if you're already on the patreon page I, well, I've already done I've got six terrain tutorials up there now I believe the, the first of the new generation is up and I'll definitely be adding more as I get the equipment figured out that's pretty much what a lot of the patreon page stuff does is it goes to I'm able to just try and get some different equipment and do some different things different materials so you can see what we're doing here we're looking to get a little bit of yeah a little more of a contrast there we'll go in with some greens too but for now See, so doing that whole, that filbert type of thing, a gentle brush stroke. It's not a dry brush at all. There's plenty of paint on that brush. We're just using a really gentle brush stroke. So what we'll do, yeah, is a bunch of purity seal type things. We'll get into the reds next. I think that'll be fun. I think that'll be just nice. All right, so we got. I think we're gonna do some red here, some red here, there. I think there's some on the pack, and then obviously on the arms. Now we'll be right back with that. Let's move into our reds here, and nothing fancy. We're gonna take some of that fleshed here red. We'll mix it with that. Oh, what is that called? Wild Rider red. It's sort of an orange-ish type color and there's not a whole lot of his arm at least that I can reach so it shouldn't take too long get rid of some of that extra but you can see look at what a nice interesting red that makes and also lets some of our existing darker red show through some of that here too and remember we we grab the smaller brushes just later on in the process for right now I'm just gonna stay focused on just the broader range here of shapes shading because well we're working on the whole thing all at once we're not just gonna like I talked about I'm just gonna pick out one little element and render the heck out of that and then move on to the next one because it just in the end it really doesn't make any sense now that i've got my light here i can see i'm going to take some of my darker stuff again and while well, i've got this brush i'm just going to yeah that is what i could not see before i knew there was more to get in there you can't even see what it is that i'm trying to paint here so just trust me there's a whole bunch of stuff there that needed just some kind of paint on it that I couldn't even see before that's how dark it was all right that is a little bit better I mean if at some point I guess somebody rips him off of there they'll see that but otherwise yeah not so much we're also well we've got some of that red I'm gonna do some additional glazes in here Oh, yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure you can see these things because sometimes it just gets out of the frame. Not like it used to, though. I'm going to double down on some of the darker colors here. Again, that makes the blue just stand out a bit more. And in some places, I'm going to, you know, let's say, ah, I think we don't need quite so much blue glow over there. 
like over here I've got it around here that's just too much and you know these as as neat as I thought that idea was going to be I think it's just going to be too much of it so we're just going to make those we're going to make a change and you can see just uh, we do a quick glaze over those boom how hard was that uh, as in really not hard at all Gonna reinforce a bit of those darks there on the So now it just looks like some actually some interesting shading there. I'm also gonna hit these. Because I feel like those Yeah, that That's doing it more for me now. I can even use look at this, I'm gonna use the brush to remove some. It's something I used to do a lot more back in the day. Here, we're going to take some of this away. It's basically drying out the brush and using it the way we'd use the sponges. So look at that. See how much more depth there is in those things. Look at that. Uh, I do that a lot with the oils, the removing of paint with the brush or just manipulating the paint that's already on there with the brush. As in a brush that has no paint on it, just being used to push paint around be surprised at how much fun that is and I certainly do that in plenty of the oil painting videos there'll be there's gonna be more coming especially in the lead up to Adepticon here the what's kind of between well trying to basically work the new filming station that is taken way more time away than I ever thought it would and then to I was trying to use the oh what are they the AK interactive oils and that just I'm still trying to get a handle on that oh gosh what is that stuff the matte medium no the matte oh gosh it's like super matte glaze me something like that thinner that's it super matte they're matte thinner whatever the heck it's called it's taken me a while to figure out what proportions because the, otherwise that stuff dries super shiny now on the subject of shiny the contrast paints that's the one thing i mean they're it's not like a they're my go-to paint or anything like that. It's more like I use them because other people really want to know things that they can do with them. Unlike, say, the Reaper paints or the, especially the Creature Caster paints, they can actually have a little bit of shininess to them, which is unfortunate. All right, let's go to a smaller, use a smaller brush, I guess. I'll go back into our red mix here and can you see yeah you can see that now the other thing too is that as much as I would love to spend six hours on this tutorial to show you every single last thing well there's just you don't have six hours and neither do I so I'm trying to get you to all the essential things so hopefully this provides you with enough at least enough ideas here to kind of proceed on your own with the with the rest of it there now if I can't get the colors that I need I may just go in with my some of my Reaper colors or the creature caster colors just to get what I need well because again this is a commission thing here but I'm trying to do what I can with the few colors that I've got. Now, it's, it's not as if I would grab 20 different colors of red. There's just the, the clear red is more, it has a broader range of reds that it can make than, say, stuff like the Flesh Tears red or that I can do with this yellow to lighten it. You also know, notice that I didn't use white to lighten the color that's really something that's not going to end well for you because I don't know how many times I've heard people say man my color gets all chalky or it gets pink and I'll say so did you lighten it with white and they'll say well yeah and I'll say well yeah 
there you go. Because you use the white to lighten it, well, white and red, they make pink. That's what they do. And that's why you ended up with a chalky pink thing, because you used, unfortunately, <laughs> the two things that make pink when you combine them together. Now, on, on the flip side of things, you use too much of the yellow, then your color starts becoming orange. That's, well, white and red, pink, yellow and red, orange. That's what you're going to get. But if you put just enough, a touch of white in there, what that will do is it counteracts the effect that the orange or the yellow has and, and vice versa. So let's say you put a little bit of uh, you know, you don't want something to get too pink. Just throw a little bit of the yellow in there and just takes it just away, far enough away from orange or from pink. Whatever. Either either way, like I say, give give that a try. I think it'll I think it can work for you. You know what? I I'm just gonna look at his Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna try and get some more now here, obviously we've got some of the object source lighting going on, but over here, I originally had this is more like a gold, and I know the sword is in the way, but he's just, it's looking too much like gold, so I am going to try to take some of that away here. Uh, yeah, let's go, I'll leave that as red, but couple of these spots over here I think I should try and work in some red. Now of course I'm working from what would you say different references at this point because obviously the the figure is it's not a GW one and most of your art illustrations whatever you want to call those well those are going to be clearly be from GW so See what I can do with that. All right, here's a, here's a lighter red. There we are. And I can, like I said, I can always go back in with some darker glazes. I, I was just doing that in the last video. I had gone to a certain point with the figure, and I said, you know what? There's just there's not enough dark here, and I did a really a whole series of darker glazes at the very end. Since we're not, this is not a traditional kind of layer it up type thing. Now, the the next thing we would tackle probably is, well, the golds getting some highlights on the golds and some of the some of the greens the other things that kind of make it look like gold as opposed to just imperial fist yellow basically and that probably one of the last things we'll do is things like purity seals freehand designs that sort of thing normally i try to work those in as soon as i can but there was a because of the the optic source lighting and all the other details we're trying to work into this there, there's only so much stuff that I could work in. Uh, speaking of working in some colors, so I just snuck some red into there so if I can't necessarily, if I don't have lots of places to put red just in armor, well now I can maybe try and reflect it in a few places here. Well it should anyway because there is red here there's the red of his power pack, so shouldn't that reflect on some of the golds? I think it should, and that's what we'll do. That is what we will do. Oh, good, you can see that. I was, wasn't was quite sure you could see that. So that's the, again, the Wild Rider red and... we're going to do is go back to this somewhat darker version. It's also again got the contrast paint in there so it makes it say semi-translucent. Let's the stuff show through. 
Look at the, the difference there. What I put down that was just a straight up kind of wild red or red. And now this next one, it basically provides that transition between the two. And, and as you can see, it's, we haven't touched any white yet. And we're looking, we're getting some pretty nice highlights. When you grab a, a middle color like this, or even one that's not really all that light, and you drop it down on your miniature and you and it looks like a highlight well congratulations you've been really successful then in, in establishing some nice solid darks because sometimes at, at first it's oh man just, what did I do and I realized no that that's actually a good thing I was able to really set in some nice dark colors for this to look like a highlight it means I was very successful in establishing my darks. Now, uh, something that I actually, it's an example that I use a lot, and that is okay, you're highlighting reds. Okay, yeah, you're going to maybe use, well, some form of red to highlight that red, but shading it, like making it darker. Sometimes, let's say you have. Oh, I don't want to say necessarily a dark angel's green, but some kind of dark green that ends up being your shadow color for your red. Let's see, got a big red cloak or something like that. And then the f deep folds of that, instead of just, okay, we're going to take black and red and make a dark red. Nothing wrong with that, but what actually would make a much more interesting shadow color is again, take some kind of green or maybe like a really dark blue you mix that with your red and all of a sudden now you've got there's still red in it but there's just so much more going on than just a darker version of your red do you have to do that well no you don't have to do anything but you do you are going to get yourself a little more interest in your in those darks people will look at it and instead of just well like what happened with ours where the there was nice shading it was definitely shaded light to dark all that kind of had its shadows everything else but it didn't really have much depth to it not much oomph it just kind of looked like a well shaded toy but when you get those a little bit of a surprise in the dark so something like that that green color i was telling you about then it sort of evolves from just a little painted miniature to I always I hate to use the word real when we're talking about little miniatures most of which are like barbarians and space marines and werewolves but that's kind of the case now I'm gonna add a little bit of the yellow in here so I can make some of this a little bit lighter just a little bit lighter Uh, like so and I'll like I said I'll be going back in with some other uh, some, some darker glazes and such such but for now I'm gonna try and get some reds reflected in my golds over here And I'm just kind of feeling it over here with some of that same red. So I'm, I'm using different different forms of highlight colors here. And I'm trying to be aware of let's not have these red highlights where there actually should maybe be object source lighting hitting this. Trying to think of a little bit of reflected light there. And even here, maybe I'm just saying no to some of the blue from the power sword that could have been reflected there. And yeah, like at this point here, I've got, this, now I'm really starting to see the differences. I, I knew there was plenty of differences between the reference picture and what it is we're actually working on, but it just becomes more and more apparent as I
get into some of these details here. All right. Now, as long as it's, see, I'm, I'm using a combination of, see, let's take this. That's the off white. Well, what is that stuff? It is the screaming skull. Yeah, screaming skull. Because there's a little bit of yellow in there, that's what keeps it from turning that pink color. The other thing, kind of learn the hard way, especially with the Space Marines, it, I would be highlighting the stuff on their feet every bit as intensely as the stuff that was on their heads. Like the top of their helmet would have darn near the same level of highlighting that the tips of their toes were. And I would just, again, at the time I thought, wow, that's some nifty shading right there. And then I'd say, well, yeah. Not that it should really get that bright there at all. And that's, I guess, the other thing, too. Maybe you take some of your, maybe some of your older stuff and maybe look at it that way. The other thing that I like to do, and I, it's not really going to show it quite so well. I like to do this when I've got even more of the object source lighting in. But you, you take a picture of your miniature just with your phone. And I'm pretty sure every phone camera has some kind of a little image gallery software thing that lets you just take away all the color and turn it into a black and white. And then check that out. Cause that, that'll be kind of a revelation for you. Now, now I think there's a, there should be enough shading on here now to maybe try that exercise. I just want to not lose my place here. There's lots of little little fiddly things going on here so where's my color intensity boom right there so you can see we still have you look at the purity seals there you can see the the light you can even see a little bit of the object source lighting effect but that's it's um it's a quick exercise you can do you don't need a you don't need XSplit recording software. I mean, you just take a picture and kill the color. And that should be, like I said, a fun little exercise. It'll let you know, yeah, you know what, I I need more. I really need more of those middle tones. It just It's either light or it's dark and, and nothing in between or the other way around. Because what's the, oh my gosh, the, the standard... When when people are at contests and they ask the judges, so what what can I do to improve on this, this, that, and the other? And what's the common refrain? What do they always hear? Well, make it pop or push the contrast or whatever. You know what? That simple little thing with the black and white picture that might show you more about you know what you would want to do than asking anybody. What should I do with this? Because guess what? They've been asked that question 40 times by 30 other people, sometimes two or three times by each person, and you are now the next one in line, and their their brains are fried. They're just going to tell you kind of that same thing. Just uh, make it pop, push the highlights or something like that, and you say, well, what does that really mean? Maybe it doesn't mean push the highlights, but they just kind of say it just because that's what they can think of at the time easily. You, you look at that picture in black and white, that might tell you something else. That might tell you, mm, you know what, I need to get at those those middle tones that he was talking about. I got plenty of light, not decent darks, but boy, there's a desert in the middle. There is not a whole lot going on but in between those. So something, something to ponder. Speaking of darker, well, let's do something like that. We just took some of the wild wood. We took some of the red. Where are we at here? Oh, I dropped some of that right in here. There, there's some filigree stuff going on. And I'm wanting to get me some of that. Also here, 
I'm going to do that more as a glaze right up in here. So can you s now you can see it. Oh, it's, it's a little bit hidden for me, but it's more important for you guys to see me trying to work some. There we go. It just needed to be darker. Just needed a little bit more. And the way it darks there, that's that's more what I'm looking for. We will try and get some more separation over here. Get some darks into here. Because sometimes you think you got dark. Like I said, there's times where I thought it just was almost too dark, and then I realized, no, it's not dark enough. And sometimes it works the other way around. Other way around. Looking forward to putting some green into these golds here. That'll be, like I said, in the next round. The next round of stuff that we do. And I, th I think we're okay here. I, I don't necessarily want to go all the way to the lightest light on the reds until I see what everything else is supposed to look like. So, now yeah, what we'll do is we'll... I'll give some of this a chance to dry a little bit. Now we're going to step in with the the golds, and we'll actually try and do some things on the on the face too. So we'll be right back with that. Let's get into things like some of the golds, and maybe even few little doodads on the face here. Now we talked about working in some green. So what we're going to do right now is so I just took some of my yellow mix and let some of the Achillean green ironically mix with that and again this is another one of those situations where it's just people won't really recognize it as green because of everything else that's around it but when you do stuff like golds having greens and purples and other what would you say surprise colors like that you it goes a long way towards making the uh, the golds have that reflectivity, just it makes them look a little bit extra bright and just it's hard to underestimate what not using yellow for golds can do. Uh, that's about the most efficient way that I can put that. And when you look at a lot of the things that I've done with golds, there's all kinds of greens and purples and everything else in there, but when you look at it, that is not what you see until you really start looking close and that's actually what you're looking for because we used to back in the day we were non-metallic metal we were doing our golds and there's another one of those situations where it was richly shaded variations of yellow which if again if you're doing the imperial fists that's fantastic but let's say you want Oh, Sanguinius, and I've actually got a, a link, or the Sanguinor, or whatever the heck he is. I've got a link to that. I, I try to include links at the end of the video here for things that are related. So, obviously, anything that's either Blood Angel related or has gold non-metallic on it, or maybe freehand, I always try and link those things. But you can always check out the playlists, too, because that's another area where there's stuff that's basically similar and like I said this is if I just was using only a darker shade of yellow for things like the golds or whatever it would be kind of painfully obvious after a while now we can I'm gonna add even a little bit more yellow to that green and once again it's it's not about just making it lighter that actually makes it be a little bit more saturated which is why we're just going to use it in a few places we're not gonna not like huge swaths of this are going to be green it's it's an accent it's something we slip in here and there and especially here say against the the reds of the armor a handy place for it because well yeah reds and greens yep those are opposites so not necessarily a bad thing to have if you're 
just looking to get that that contrast elevated there now especially here where we're in a, a zone where it's supposed to be you know, sort of influenced by this glow of this sword well now it's even more appropriate over here because now it starts to look like it's maybe it's affecting the gold but it's not necessarily it's more than just the blue light on it it's it's influencing the color there it's a way to what would you just want to say to get some of the object source lighting in there without it being lit if that makes any sense whatsoever but you can see we got red and then green and then another shot of green there we're gonna do some reflected light over here and heck even some of that potentially even some of the sword reflection could make it to here so how's about just a bit of that right there I, I suppose when people ask about the the non-metallic stuff they they say oh, I wouldn't know what colors to use well that's actually the handy thing about non-metallic metal of all the things you could do I guess aside from object source lighting really the non-metallic stuff it pretty much says what goes where it says look you got all this you get them wearing a red cloak or something like that right next to all this metal armor well what if, what do you need you need red there well, another thing that's fun too are some of these little linear highlights like that again only keep it here let's do let's get a little more of the Achillean green ah good you can see that again we're trying to influence the gold here not necessarily wipe it out entirely and we've got dying we got to get some more reflections back in here too and I never just work on one area I know I'll say well we're gonna work on the golds now but sometimes I just I have to go back and forth to other things it's just it's the reality of the situation it's another way you can keep that line moving faster because you're not just saying well you know what I got this color on the brush boy it would be really handy right in this spot but it's not time to paint this so I'm not going to do even though I, it's just the paint sitting on the brush it's ready to go and yet I'm not gonna go ahead and paint that section so you can see why that just well that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense and we'll we'll do more on the sword there too and again I don't want this to be a seven hour video so I'll do what I can do what I can with this guy in the time that I have here let's smooth this down here I, I see there's just some other areas here that need yeah that that's gonna have to also be the sword color there if it's one of those things where it just it tells you what you need to have in a certain spot because if you got a certain color it's like okay now how do these things not have some of that sword blade light being cast on it so let, let's do some of that even though technically it's all about the gold see here we're even spreading out a little bit of a it just it needs it there even though this is not specifically the time where we're supposed to be doing that Need a little bit of wet into wet there and no fuss no muss now we've got a little better spread on that and I'm also going to just include a pinch of that over there too now let's go over to this other side here before we forget about that now we got the the red already on underneath the 
this kind of chalice and wings right here. So in another instance where some green is going to get us some separation here from the red. But now let's do a bit of a reflected light thing down here. And I added some of the Screaming Skull to it. it. Less about lightening it up, more about almost kind of graying it down a bit. And by graying it down, it just it's less saturated, less pure of a color. That's all it is. Sometimes I forget that that's... Well, it doesn't really... I don't see it as that way, but it, I guess to some it's a fancy-schmancy art term, so... Our term explained, and let's just, while we got this color, uh, it, it seems like his hair is on the, well, white, but we're not painting white. We're just going to give it the sort of look of white here. They're actually using that same exact green, which is going to be really handy on some parts of the face here, because it's that nice sort of five o'clock shadow green. Now it's a little tough to get this in here just because of, well, space marine armor happens. That, that's a thing. And now I've got, again, some of that screaming, screaming skull here. We'll get a few lights from his hair in there. have this cascade over the armor like so and I'm going to see what I can get now as some lights down here on the skin tone Yeah, it's really tough for me to work this in there, so it might be just one of those things that I can't quite do on camera for you because I just have to hold it in a way where you can't see it, and that's not... I mean, if you can't see it, there's no point in me spending film time on that. I am going to get some more darks in a few places. I know this was all about highlights, but then there's times where I see sometimes when you're adding those lights and you say, you know what? What it really needs here is actually more dark instead of more light. This is another reason why I just there's not those clean, clearly defined stages that everybody wants to see. Like, okay, this is just the highlights. Highlights are done. We'll never do another highlight. And glazing is done. We'll never do another glaze doesn't really work that way and that, that can be traumatizing for people because they're used to these well now we do this one thing now we do this other one thing then we do this other one thing this is more of a we're gonna go back and forth kind of thing because sometimes that's just what you gotta do now this is a bit of a mix of the Baylor Brown. It's it's really just a yellow ochre, kind of a very light yellow ochre. And some of the oh, is that flash gets yellow, I think it is. Some of the yeah, flash gets yellow. I'm gonna try and can you even see that? I don't know if you can even see that. There's a uh, typical Blood Angel symbol. It's sitting there inside that chalice. Now I'm going to mix myself a brighter yellow to use here. And we'll try and find ourselves a few of these highlights. And all of a sudden, those colors that we put on there that looked so light before will not look so light now. It's interesting, kind of a dramatic 
change the logo right here if we can. Right along that edge. Okay, we got the. I didn't realize that was a chalice over there at first. Let's get some of those same highlights along here. And it doesn't take long before all of a sudden it's here completely different than it was just a few seconds ago. It's just a couple of brush strokes, really. I think that just the more you simplify things like this that could potentially seem pretty daunting. Hopefully they seem a little bit less so. Uh, that's and so many times people will message me or they'll show me pictures of their stuff and they'll say, man, this is something I never would have tried just even a few months ago. Never would have thought I could do it. And they're they're overjoyed because they they felt like they were equipped to handle it now and that it wouldn't be such a terrifying experience. But there's there's always first times for things. I know even now because I'm using oils and now I'm even getting into well metallics. Those are that's always going to be new for me because well just like this commission thing everyone always asked us for non-metallic metals. They just they said I, I don't want metallics I'm coming to you for non for non-metallic metals so that's what we did we would have tried you know the other the the non metallic or the regular metallics if people had said that was okay but they just pretty much never did so we just didn't do it, it wasn't like we didn't want to try it or whatever that's another reason for the the patreon thing is so that now i have that opportunity to say well you know what i'll do this it's my own army project anyway. I'm going to see what happens if I do some non-metallic or, or some true metallic metals. I think the ultimate experience will be doing true metallic metals with oils. Yeah, that's going to be a thing. I'll enjoy that. Now, while I'm here, again... Gonna grab me some of the Achillean. Great, and just hit this. So I was gonna throw some on the gold anyway, but while I'm here, I'm gonna hit these fingers. His cloak here for sure, because it's just so close to that. And then I've got to think this sort of basically casts a shadow. So this I'm probably going to just, I don't want to say put completely in shadow, but I'm definitely going to darken that up. And let's let's just do that real, real quick here. So I'm going to take, again, some of the Leviathan blue, some of my original glaze color here, and we'll just go over the top of it because remember the... Uh, contrast paints, they're thin enough to use as a glaze. That's for sure. And I'll just go back and wipe some of the excess away. I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to get a little more here. Where else did we want some? I think we wanted some over here too. So we're back to some golds over here. This is with the my lighter 
color here. Now again, I'm just I'm getting blocked by a lot of things. I think if this were, if it were up to me, this backpack certainly wouldn't be on there. But I wasn't about to rip it off. When I did, if you see the Sanguinor video that I did, well, that is. That's the case. I, I painted the, the wings separately because, well, I was the one that assembled it, so it was it was all up to me. But that, that option may not be there for you either, just like it wasn't for me here. Sometimes those, what are they, the, the gaming, the board game figures, right, where they're just all one piece. Song of Ice and Fire are certainly like that. which there's part of that is is nice to have it all in one piece no assembly required but then it's going to make it kind of difficult for you in other ways and these things here I'm not quite sure I and mean, really are they would they be gold or would they just this is the dreaded sculpted on freehand which I understand why why it's done. I just I wish it wasn't done because we would rather just have the option of putting whatever we want ourselves there. So more of an open canvas as opposed to this hard sculpt that we just we have to deal with and we're stuck with. Now I think I might just go for more of a scorching thing on the end of the plasma pistol over there. So let's get a bit of, yeah, I need a little more separation there. Go back in these last few minutes here. I'm going to go back to the face. Let's mix up some kind of a a lighter skin tone but something that can go in with these greens I don't want it just to be exclusively all just green like he's dead or he's kind of not feeling so hot I'm gonna go another step lighter here can you see that I think so Now let's see what I can do for some eyes. Now this is normally where I'd be using, say, uh, a Reaper liner paint or a Reaper clear paint or whatever, or even one of the Pro Acryl transparents. But we we use what we have. So put in the eyebrows, and now we're going to do something like this. Hopefully, it shows up. The idea is to go in between those two dark colors that I painted, which by default sort of draws you an eyelid and an eyebrow. You kind of get two for the price of one, but without having to struggle doing a really thin eyebrow line or eyelid line. Just it kind of takes away there. Something like that. Now, let's see if I can get some pupils or irises or whatever I can do. I'm trying to reach in here. Got to Okay, you can. I think you can see it. And the idea is going to be to attach that to the. upper eyelid there and I'll have to redo these two areas that I painted here under his eyebrow just because of the way the thing is sculpted and where I've got to hold brushes and stuff so 
So now there's a little more of an expression on the face, but like I said, I'm going to have to go back in there later and just really try and get down in there. There's only so much I can do in this small amount of time here. So what I will do is the, the next section here, I'm going to try and see what I can do purity seal wise here, freehand wise. And I'll probably then have to do one more sort of a, well, a final detail slash final thoughts kind of a segment. I, I like to do those at the end of episodes too. So just a couple of more. Here he said, these guys, they're also going to need some reflected light here because they're, yes, they've got that the glow from the object source lighting, but not a whole lot else. And like I said, those are the kind of things that I'll just have to go back in later on and work with. So, okay, we'll be right back. We're going to maybe play around in this area mostly. So we'll be back with that next. Let's play around here real quick with our purity seals. And I'm going to do a little bit of... Here, let's do some something like this. Maybe I'm going to grab some of this too. And the idea is so it has a bit of a I don't want to say a burned look, but more of a stained look to it. I mean, we got these cut marks in there. It just it makes something these are pretty huge surfaces here, and of course they're kind of on the thick side too. And I got some wildwood over here. I can, I can, let that almost wet blend together. I can also scumble that together. So now the edges of these starts to make sense why there's these cut marks in there. I can always lighten it up afterwards but it just it seemed to me this is something they could really use and we'll just kind of okay, we're darkening down these edges just going to use some of the contrast paints here this is so similar in, in many ways to what I do with the oils is stuff a little bit like this. I'm even going to do that here. On the edge of this, it just, I don't know, it's it's so light and it's got some, there's even holes sculpted in it, so why would there be holes in it and yet perfectly sort of highlighted along the edge? So what we're going to do is sort of weather that and beat that up a bit here. Not a whole bunch. Not a lot. I don't know if I'm going to have time to do that, that face over there. I'm not even sure you can see it. Because, yeah, it's to be, well, maybe I can try and squeeze that in there. We'll, we'll see. We'll try and Try and get as many things in a, as we can on this. And while I've got this here good, that was I wanted to make sure I had enough scorching on the end of that. And I'm also going to darken some of these other areas down here just a bit. There, see how that just really changes those. Again, I don't know if they're purity seals or not, but that's just what we'll treat them as here. Now, we got some of this green that we made. Now, now let's go with some. Let's do something like this. So, where are we at here? I'm going to avoid 
the folds for right now but I'm just gonna put in a couple of these rectangles and you'll see what they're for in a bit and we'll put something like this over here and maybe we're just gonna do something a bit like this with something that resembles a bit of a chalice there now let's put another one over here oh, let's throw one down here and we'll let those dry and while those dry I'm going to go back to that wild wood we're gonna get this where you can see it and I can have a decent brush stroke to do something like this might as well do it right now before I get into everything else okay finalize some of this again that for lack of a better term it's sort of like weathering how many times have you seen purity seals that kind of have that treatment well you can see it's not all that hard that'll be another interesting thing for you to see with the with the contrast paints now I'm going to take again some of the wildwood here and then we're going to start to this is called in the printing industry it was always called greeking and basically you're trying to make nonsensical things like well there's no words here no we're not going to be reading the letters that we're putting but we're trying to have something in the way of gaps here in between these letters almost make it look like there's some paragraphs here Just make it look like it's some kind of calligraphy. We've got some more of those lines to do down here. And you can see it's more than just what we're trying to have what looks like ascending and descending letters here, more than just simple lines. You know, even here, you can just do a simple sort of a skull thing here. We'll do a skull and we'll draw in the eyes afterwards. It's easier to just do that quick shape like that and draw in eyes later. Let's do that on this side over here. And the, the thing about when you're using the contrast paints for this see they're they're thin and they actually almost are a little bit on the watery side well that's good because now it it sort of looks like that washed away ink look instead of just oh look someone just took some black and drew some squiggly lines here it starts to almost look like parchment or vellum and ink really I guess Now, and you can always, I suppose you could reference some of the artwork too. Like I wish I could see a little bit closer on that one image that's in the, in the corner there, but I know it's kind of on the fuzzy side. There really is not much revealed when it comes to whatever purity seals might be on Mephistian there. And we'll keep going with these guys. like you do like a lot of this stuff I'll just have to come back with afterwards here there's just not enough time for all of these things that I want to include so once we have see our, our scroll work in place let's get to something that's lighter here 
I'm going to mix that with our... Ah, how about some of this? I keep wanting to say it's it's bubonic, bubonic brown, I think, was the old color. I'll get this centered up for you. And the idea is we are going to put in here a capital T, because that's a pretty common starter letter right there. We give it a border and then a little bit of filigree inside. Let's do maybe an A over here. If you can, yeah, I think you'll be able to see it. So we're going to see we've got a little border around it. I don't want to do this super bright because, well, that's really going to stand out in a shadow area like that. So we got another one over here. Looks like it's on camera. Hopefully in focus enough for you to see. And I'm going to do another little little T over here. Again, just a hint of some kind of filigree inside that. Now, I can't make this a touch brighter just because, well, imagine they use some kind of gold leaf on it or whatever. And that's why you can see it. Here, we'll do a couple of eyes and a nose for our, our skull there and let's do our last purity seal it's basically it's like an illuminated manuscript type of thing and you can see how simple it is not very complex at all we'll give that one also the letter a it's just it's a suggestion of it that's all it is and see so i can even enhance the suggestion of that. Now here it's just not going to show up very much. But there we can get some of that on our, our chalice. And just like with some of the gold non-metallic, it's more about just a few little points here. I think you can, you can see what we did. So yeah, not a super complex thing. You know, if we want to have a freehand line here, we can just go right along the edge of this. This is pretty, I mean, the undulations in this, that is... When things are sculpted digitally, you have a tendency to get this sort of... The things that are claw, things that should be kind of organic, tend to be a little bit stiff. That's just the nature of the beast. And look at this. We've got some of that snake bite leather, and we're going to drop a bit of shading on that. We can do even a little bit more here. Since we haven't done our final shading yet on that, that's going to work. You know, heck, I could even just make the uh, bottom of his cloak dusty or, or something along those lines. Now for this thing here, oh, let, let's just try it. So I'm going to do is go darker here. Oh boy. Okay, you can see that now, and but I can't see it. So yeah, this may be, that's kind of a hopeless thing. So we're not going to do that because we just don't have time for all that. Yeah, so it's, for me to be able to do anything there, yeah, you would not be able to see it, so maybe we'll just go with more freehand stuff on this. So let's try and complete whatever that is. And let's do a something maybe here. We can 
do some things to this line. We could even put another scalloped line above it. Say something like this. I'm just going to do it darker here first. Can you, yeah, see that? You can see. And I can see it. It's kind of important that both of us can. Because when I put that, this thing over here, so that I could see it, it was pretty much hidden from you and then just the opposite the other way. So, yeah, sorry, that was not going to happen. Would have liked to. Now, the other Blood Angel video that I've got, there is some freehand uh, on a base where I do s something similar to that a, a design on a base and well it's on the base so it's real easy to see it all right so there's some of our scallop if in some places it goes wonky like over here you can see I can just kind of paint over that a little bit fix it up Man, I can always now start to enhance that like this. Don't want it to get too light as it works its way down into that fold. So we're going to concentrate mostly out here on these ends. Then again, let it fade as it goes into the crevice there but I can always knock it down if need be what I'm going to do is actually put like a little kind of a gold blood drop here in each of these areas that's a quick and easy thing but when combined with the other other stuff, well now it looks like something. It, it looks like it was a fully intended pattern all along. Like we meant to do that. I could make those red also. Yeah, that's... What the heck, what do we got to lose? Let's just throw up maybe some red on those and see what happens. See what it looks like. We don't like it. Go right back over it with the the gold no problem oh yeah yeah I like those that's that's good that's good and sometimes these ideas they just come to you as you're working on it it's, some, it's hard to always think in advance and, and plan things we all want to plan things in advance but sometimes you either overthink it or the plan just just is too elaborate yeah there we go okay so see that's it's a real quick thing there and I can still enhance this even more in, in some places so let's say we want that freehand to be lighter in a couple of spots here well we can do that We can do that. But I also don't want to get too wrapped up in freehand. And the thing is, too, you make that freehand too noticeable. Just And I've had it happen where I, I did all this freehand and then it was loved and all that. But it was just so massive and so per, just out there right in people's faces that they said, well, could you tone that down please just like chipping and weathering freehand is really cool until there's too much of it and then you go oof it's not like that ruins anything yeah you because know, you can always just shade over it but now you've also invested all that time in something you are painting over and that's not really something we want to be doing all the time yeah, none of these things are supposed to be rules like yeah you must follow this rule or else it's just they're suggestions really just think of them as suggestions that's what I try and do here 
I just put out some ideas and say, hey, have you ever thought of it like this? And I'm just going to do a couple of little glazes in here. There, it needed that little extra bit in there. Okay, so that, we'll just say that wraps up our, our freehand section here. And we'll try and do some just little final dibs and dads here and there to just maybe really focus on this, see if we want to do some more stuff with this sort. So we'll be right back with that. Let's see what sort of final details we can add in on this here. Now let's take, this is our wild wood and our Leviathan blue here. Gonna make some darks. Now the other key thing is, and I'll show you this, the Army Painter Annie Shine is really helpful because one thing that does happen with the, this is unlike say the Reaper paint or the Pro Acryl paints, and I think I mentioned this earlier probably a couple of times, that the contrast paints, are just the GW paints in general, are going to be glossier than just about everything else that I use. I think even my oil paints, when they dry, the Migama oil brushes and stuff, they are not this glossy, which is interesting. <laughs> Unexpected, interesting, whatever you want to call it. But I uh, slapped some more darks in there, just to because black is just not black. He's oh, I didn't need any black out here. Been able to get plenty of super dark colors without the need to harm any black whatsoever. No black paint was used in this. I know there's oh, it must be black Templars contrast paint. It has to be called that, but don't have it. I just basically got the colors that I thought I would be using most often, and those replicated the blue and brown liner paints that I use all the time, the red liner paint. And actually, I'm going to be doing that too a, a little bit this coming... Well, not sure when you're going to be watching this, but <laughs> if you're watching this in the time right before Adepticon, I'm actually going to do a little bit of a shift back to my Reaper paints just to have some fun and, and work with some familiar things again, stuff that I've used for years and years and years. So I can get some more darks in a few other areas. Not sure if you can even see all that. Just strengthening up some darks here. And then what I can do is, here, we'll take something that is lighter, like our, let's call it Space Wolves Gray again. That's that Fenrisian Gray, I'm pretty sure. Let's see what kind of a Lighter, yes, yeah, it's a little bit lighter now. There was just a couple of, oh, just some things here I wanted to. There's a, a few, what would you say, a couple of weird brushstroke type things that happen. I just want to get rid of those. Make some adjustments to the width of some of these freehand lines here because that's that's the other nice thing too is with the freehand like this a pattern of this type you can go in and, and change that make some adjustments to it no problem I'm gonna probably go back into some of these things get even more reflected light into some of those areas like I said here I will be doing some freehand in on that a bit like what we did out here good you can see what I'm doing for a second I, I thought you weren't going to be able to see what I was trying to do out here on the ends of the of my purity seals there and we'll go like I said, we're just going to work our way around this, but we find sometimes there's lights that need to be brought back in. It's, I don't know, I don't know if it always happens on every, towards the end of every figure that I do, but it's, it's a little bit of a ritual there. At the end, it just kind of, 
Start looking around for, oh, yeah, you know what, it's, I want to say it's a spot that was missed, but maybe I had a thought for something else there and just forgot about it, or I was in the middle of something. It, it can happen a lot when you're recording videos, that's for sure, because it's just, there's so many different things you've got to watch and keep track of. Also want to do a few little glazes on the base or tone that down. I'm even going to here on the on his foot here, restore some more darks in there. I'll just make those again. This is about just reintroducing some nice healthy darks in places see I think I'm a little bit happier with some of that I certainly need to get some darks down in here just there is kind of a sea of middle tone there we're gonna actually throw some dark reds in here I'm move this over that's what I'm after in here Yeah, that was helpful. I think there's a couple of other areas too. I could use some nice deep reds. Now this armor again, it's a when you sculpt things in 3D like this, sometimes you make some unusual shapes to say the least. This also could use some darks. I just want to make sure, yeah, I think you can see that. Even here, I'll just introduce some of that same red over there. How's about some over here? And now we've got these blood drops that are all essentially the same level of lightness even though some of these things are kind of in shadow and that's what I'm going to do is I'm gonna tone down some of these blood drops that I feel should be more in shadow also have there we go that was a I fixed all the other lines made those match up except for that one for whatever reason I'm using the, the same gray that I was just darkening some of the black with. I'm even using some of that on my golds. And I'm going to get some of that in the here. And skull on the shoulder pad. And then to sort of maybe finalize things here, let's grab some of the White and Achillean green. Let me see what I can do here on this sword to spice things up a little bit more. Now that I've darkened this down, yes, I can bring back a few. Look at this on these. I'm just going to refer to them as sensors here. That is handy. And a couple of other lighter, a couple of light on the metals here because, well, it is, we want it to be as reflective as possible, being the fact that it's metal. So some of those chains start to, those start to come out a little bit more. Now I'm back in here, so I'm going to see what I can do here. A little generation of yeah, that, that typical sort of 
power sword thing that you might see. Just going to make sure that's on screen for you. And I'm going to actually get a little bit more of my Achillean green in there. Maybe have it not be quite so light in this first first go around here. You can see we're kind of intermixing some of that crackling energy. This almost makes it like part sword, part power sword instead of just automatically I don't know. In the past I used to just have the, the crackling energy and really no other what would you say pattern or anything on the actual sword itself. To me this is a little more fun here. It sort of looks like it's a oh gosh I, I just saw a cosplay person and they had their what looked like warbler armor on and it, it had a, some spectacular paint job on it it was fantastic then all of a sudden these LED lights were turned on and it went from what looked almost like well, gold armor to then being illuminated in blues and greens and I went, what in the heck is going on here that was pretty wild to see that and that, that kind of gave me the idea to do maybe this here where it's just okay it's a regular looking sword blade but yet in places you have the sort of that crackling energy there's another thing that I'm also going to do now GW does not make fluorescent paints seems like everybody else does except for them and believe me fluorescent paints make a huge difference everything else by comparison as bright as it might seem is almost dead by comparison. No, I'm gonna get see that one main sort of lightning effect that goes through that, but not absolutely everywhere. Not certainly not equally as bright everywhere. Let's go back to a slightly less bright version now. Where'd you go? Here you are. Fluorescent blue. It's from Golden Acrylics. I also use the Vallejo stuff, but this, boy, it's been a while since I used this. Oh, in fact, I haven't used it at all. Somehow I thought I'd already used this. Wow, this is the very first time. I've used the green, the magenta, the orange. I've used all of these guys, but I haven't. Apparently I haven't used this. So, what do you know? The hats. There we go. That's what I wanted to see. That's what I wanted to see. And now, I'm just going to glaze over the top of this because one of the properties of the fluorescent paints is they are super translucent. That's basically what makes them actually fluorescent is the fact that the light basically passes through them so quickly or so efficiently whereas most everything else has some degree of white in it and it does tend to trap some of the light on the miniature doesn't let it reflect back to your eyes at least that is what a we had a chemist who also did some painting and I said okay so what's the deal what is it that makes fluorescent paint fluorescent paint now we're not talking glow in the dark that's a whole different deal. I mean, maybe it does. I don't know. I don't care. It's not what I'm interested in. What I was interested in is why does this paint just make everything else look so dull by comparison? He just said, well, it's just it allows that light to come through and come back out again much more efficiently. And the more I worked with it, the more I started to realize, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So now this, it's also it's a different tint of blue. It's got definitely more red in it than what we had. Certainly has more red than, than before, but I think it's all good. 
it's just it's going to give me that extra little oomph. Put some of it here. I'm going to do another, get another little glaze over that, and then let's see what happens when I mix some of that with the Leviathan, but it's almost like a bit of a purple here. I'm just trying to change the... It's not so much about making it darker. I'm just trying to change the color a little bit to give it almost a a purple type of a... Th yeah, that, that helps there. Okay, that, that was good. And I'm going to go back into the plasma pistol over here. Now what I'm going to try to do, and I don't know if it'll really work for me here on camera, but I'm going to... That's, that's what I'm looking to do is get in between the coils here. Now, to be honest, this is something I would probably rather do with just about any other paint besides this, because I just I know those would work better than this. But we're trying to stick with what we had paint-wise here for you. Trying to stay within the 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 colors we talked about and colors we've been using. Now, afterwards, when I because again, it's a commissioned thing, it's got to look a certain way. I may have to go back in myself later and do some, some modifications to it. But at least you got to see, for the most part, how something like this is, is laid out and... How to handle things like the the purity seals, a little bit of the golds. I'm gonna go back into some of the lighter tones here. Just gonna. I know his hand is in the way, so I apologize for that. And do another quickie little glaze there. And there, sometimes these stupid plasma pistols, they can just be a real, they were, well, they were never, never really enjoyed doing them. And on the plastic ones, it always seemed like there was a mold line running right through this, through the coils here, that made it even less fun to do. Again, just going to keep working on things like these coils here and any other thing that I see where, okay, let's go on to this side here. Sometimes you just have to, I say, you know what, I'm just going to do something like that because it was just getting irritating. And sometimes the effect that I want is just not going to work. The sculpt is not going to let me do it. So I'm going to change that whole thing right there. Once that dries, I'm going to go back in and just kind of do it the standard way I used to do it way back when I would leave the upper part of the coils lighter and leave the inner parts darker. I don't really like that. I'd prefer to do it the other way around. But the paint's just not going to cooperate. And there are... Unfortunately, there's some irregularities in the, the sculpting part there. It is just not smooth enough to let me do something like that. So that's where we just say we're making a change.
Yeah, that already is going to be easier to deal with, I believe. Yeah, and I can just do some... Just a couple of these up here. Again, the what's happened is that the coils are basically... It's like they're running into each other. There's not a clean sculpt there. It's just... And that can happen with some of these. Like I said, I don't know who makes this. It's something I'll have to find out and then put in the links. I thought when, when the whole thing was proposed, I was just going to be getting the the GW Mephistian, and I would have that was what I was expecting. And then this one showed up, and I said, okay, that is definitely not the GW one. It's not even a Forge World one. And we'll make those a bit brighter, too. I, I still, no matter what, I hope that this just gives you some ideas for your future things here. Now, like I said, I don't want this to be a five-hour video here. And at a certain point, you just, you'll be seeing me do kind of the same areas over and over. So I want to say thanks for everybody's support on the Patreon page. It means a whole bunch. I'm, I'm always just... Anytime I see a miniature, I go, well, yeah, that could be an interesting lesson. Or, well, nah, that's they've seen that before. I always, as often as possible, try to have something fun and new for you guys to watch. So I'll catch you on another Painting the Grim Dark here of 40k. And in all likelihood, that's going to be some of my sisters of battle. I'm really looking forward to that. Really looking forward to that. So thanks again, everybody, and I'll catch you on the next episode.